You're watching the Spirit Food Christian Center Worldwide Webcast, broadcasting live every Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Yes, amen, hallelujah. When Spirit Food comes to you, blessings will flow. Say yes. Welcome again to Spirit Food Christian Center. Hearing the Word of God, remember to taste and see that the Lord is good. I want you at this time to get your Bible in your hand. We're going to say our confession of faith together and begin our study in the living Word of God. Prepare yourself. Repeat after me. I'm holding in my hand that which I'm holding in my heart, the holy written Word of God. The Bible is God speaking to me. I am what the Word of God says I am. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. I have what the Word of God says I possess. I am a believer, not a doubter. Therefore, God's Word is being confirmed in my life with signs following. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your Bibles, please, to two places of Scripture. I'd like for you to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and we're going to look at verse 6. And I'm going to ask you the question, for the title of the message is a question. Do you want to please God? And in that title of the message, do you want to please God, it necessitates that we are answering the question with the answer, what does please God? Which is another question, which once we find out what pleases God, then of course we can do that which pleases him. So we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 6. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We can conclude from Hebrews 11, verse 6, by what it says, we can see that it says without faith it's impossible to please God. So if we know what does not please God, and that is a person who has no faith, then what does please God? A person with faith. So apparently faith is what pleases God. And when a person operates in faith, walks by faith, chooses to operate in the plan of God through faith, they're going to have a way in which they please the Lord. Hebrews eleven six 6 again says, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Turn in your Bibles, please, to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2. And I'm going to read verses 1 and 2 because 1 leads right into 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. Notice that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, that all men do not have faith. Well, we can read and deduce from this verse of Scripture that if all men can have faith if they are willing to please God because God is willing to give faith, or we could say it this way, if God is not pleased by those who have no faith, then he must, as a just and faithful God, he must make it possible for faith to be available to everyone. Because 
It's cold, cold, cold if he says, you can't please me without faith, and I'm not going to make it possible for you to ever have faith. That wouldn't be right. A just God wouldn't do that. A just God will tell you what does not please him, and he tells you what does please him, and when he tells you what does please him, he's informing you of what pleases him because he makes what pleases him available to you so that you can please him. Now then we know this from scripture that without faith it's impossible to please God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's look at Romans the 10th chapter, Romans chapter 10 and we'll see that the scripture identifies how faith cometh. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 Romans the 10th chapter verse 17 17. You know, there are people that claim that faith is a movement. It's not a movement because movements have the ability to have momentum and then they slow down or they come to nothing. A movement is something that may be popular today but not popular tomorrow. tomorrow. A movement can be tracked as to highs and lows. But you see, when you operate in faith, you're operating in a law that God has set in motion, and that law does not become obsolete. That law does not become something that is passe or old or become a fad. Our operating by faith, the faith that pleases God, is a law. And if we cooperate with the law of faith, if we operate in faith, if we possess the God kind of faith and are willing to walk by faith and not by sight, then we're going to please God. Faith is what pleases God. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, let's look at this scripture that informs us how faith comes. The scripture says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Notice, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh means that it's possible for faith not to be present in any situation. What are you saying, Pastor, that it's possible for faith not to be present? Well, if faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, we could say it this way, where the word of God is preached, faith is present. Where the word of God is declared and the word of God is heard, faith is present. It's interesting to note that oftentimes people try to act like, well, God will just do whatever he wants to do because after all, he's God and if he wants to do it, he'll do it. God reveals what he wants in his word. But it's up for people to receive what his word declares and be willing to act on his word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If there are people that are willing to come and talk about the word, there are people that come and allude to the word, meaning that, yeah, the Bible is a great book. But they never open the scriptures. They never study the scriptures. They never put themselves in a position where they see the scriptures as God talking to them. Then they cannot be possessors of the faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17 is what I'm quoting to you. Now, why does God say faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God? Well, the second hearing because the word hearing is used twice in Romans 10, 17. The first hearing is by your natural ears hearing the word. The second hearing comes by receiving the word in your heart. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Or I could say it this way from a gesture. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I have to allow God's word to be heard in my ears. I have to allow God's word to be available to my hearing. And then once the word of God comes to my ears, it will drop from my ears down into my heart 
or another word for heart is my spirit. Therefore, I can believe God from my heart, which has trusted God from what I heard preached unto me. One minister said it this way, faith begins where the will of God is known, or faith begins where the word of God is preached, heard, and received. I choose to believe God's word. And because I choose to believe God's word, I'm going to act like God's word is so. And because I have chosen to trust God's word, then I can please God. Because God and his word are one. If I take God at his word and I obey his word, then I'm doing that which pleases him. And therefore, I choose to be a person who walks in obedience to the word of God. My question initially is, do you want to please God? Yes, I do. How do you please God? I go after his word. His word is more important to me than my daily food. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. His word is what guides my life and is the final decision for all that I do in this life. I love God's word, and because I love God's word, the Bible declares that those that love him love life. Those that turn away from God's word, those that rebel against God's word, they love death. And you know what? I'm inclined to love life. I love to be blessed and a blessing. I love to do what God asks me to do. Now let's look at a scripture where we've seen in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Remember, faith is present where the word of God is proclaimed, taught, and preached. But just because it comes does not necessarily mean that a person is believing it in their heart. How do you know if you're believing it in your heart versus it just swimming around in your head? Well, if I believe it in my heart, then I'm going to act on it. If I was only convinced of it in my head, when something of a contrary nature comes against the word, if I'm just only embracing the word in my head and not my heart, then I'll disagree with the word instead of agreeing with the word. In agreement with the word, if I trust it in my heart, then I'm going to have that word fulfilled in my life. Turn in your Bibles, please, to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, and we're going to look at uh, verse 12. Luke chapter 5, verse 12. Because we're talking about, do you please God? God is pleased by faith, and if you're going to please God by faith, then you're going to have to understand what faith is, recognize when faith is literally in operation, and be able to identify when faith is not in operation. So in Luke chapter 5, we're going to look at verse 12, and I'll begin reading, because when we talk about pleasing God by faith, I have to understand and receive and know this. When I please God, I'm giving him what he wants. When I, I'm giving now a definition of faith. I mean, of, 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 of please, of please, P-L-E-A-S and E. We're talking about pleasing God, to please him. When I please God, I'm giving him what he wants. When I'm pleasing God, I'm satisfying him. When I'm pleasing God, I'm making him glad. When I please God, I'm doing that which he prefers. When I'm pleasing God, I'm giving him pleasure. So when I talk about pleasing God, I'm not just talking about doing what I want. I'm talking about doing what he wants because it's impossible to please him without doing what he wants. And when he says, I want you to please me by faith, he has to make what he wants known unto me. 
We're looking at Luke chapter 5, verse 12. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Now, the word if thou wilt is the old English way of saying, if it's your will, you can make me clean, Jesus. You can cleanse me from my leprosy. And leprosy was a horrible disease that caused an individual's skin to have real problems and they eventually could lose limbs and ex experience really a horrible life. And this man who was experiencing leprosy came to Jesus and said, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. So what was it that kept the man from having a cleaned condition of the leprosy that he was experiencing? Well, here's the answer. He did not know what the will of God was. You see, you can't please God without knowing what his will is. You can't give God what he wants that makes him happy if you don't know what it is he desires. So the man wanted to know, if it's your will, Jesus, I know this, you can make me clean. So the man was suffering from lack of knowledge. He was suffering from not knowing what the will of God is. Now, when we consider that real impact of the ignorance of this man, we could see this. He has not changed his leprous condition until he gets his question answered. And the answer to his question, Jesus will give him. The man asked the question, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. I want you to know this. The word if is a badge of doubt. The word if means it's possible, it may not be possible. Meaning that it could go either way. Well, you can't get anything from God without knowing confidently what the will of God is. And so this man wanted to solve all doubts. He wanted to get rid of the doubt of was it God's will for him to be healed? This man wanted to know for certain if it's God's will, that means it's his pleasure, it's his desire for me to be healed. And if it's his desire and his pleasure for me to be healed, he says, I know this, you can make me clean. Verse 13 of Luke chapter 5 now. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Notice that once the man was made aware, once the man was given the knowledge, the information that it's God's will for him to be healed, then that man said, I'm open and I'm receptive. I'll have the will of God accomplished in my life. Now, there are some people that are made aware of what the will of God is, but yet they don't want to line up and do and agree with the will of God. Some people have been in a position where they're like, yeah, God wants me healthy, but he'll make it happen on his own. So I'll just let him do it. And God requires you to operate in faith. This man came with a sincere question to Jesus. He just needed to have his question addressed. If I know it's your will for me to be healed, then I will what? I will embrace the will of God and God's will will be brought to pass in my life. That was the man's position. And that's why he stopped Jesus. That's why he encountered Jesus, because he was putting an end to the dilemma of his life. This man knew that he had to have his question answered and he had to remove all doubt. And once Jesus said, I will be thou clean, then the man was made healed from that leprous condition. 
Is it possible that this man could have been informed of the will of God before he encountered Jesus? Because Jesus was the word made flesh. Was it possible for this man to know what God's will was? Yes, absolutely. Because the scriptures let us know that the will of God is revealed through the word of God. And this man was Jewish. This man knew that he was entitled to all that the will of God made available. So then his challenge was he had been ignorant of the will of God. And now he came to Jesus, who was the word made flesh, to determine what the will of God was. I know this, that when you come to insert yourself into the scriptures when you come to see the word of God as speaking to you when you receive God's word as what it is God's word to you then you will have God's word to manifest in your life so faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God this man was obvious it was obvious to us that are reading that this man did not know the will of God and therefore he needed to know the will of God to get results. We're looking at Luke chapter 5, verse 13. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he, that's Jesus, charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. That means I need you to not try to run around and give testimony about how that you've been healed until you are well informed of the scripture and the covenant of healing that has been made available through the promises of God given to Moses for the people of Israel. You see, God promised the nation of Israel that he was the Lord God, their healer. God had promised in Psalms 107 that I sent my word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. God had promised them that the, the, the sicknesses and diseases that came upon the Egyptians would not come upon them, the nation of Israel, if they would listen and obey the will of God. Now, Jesus was right in then telling this man, don't go and try to give a testimony of your healing. Why? Because invariably he would say something that was out of line with scripture. It was clear he was already ignorant before he got informed to the will of God pertaining to his healing now, but he didn't have the scripture as it is written, the reference point or the history of how healing was made available to the nation. So therefore, this man needed to be informed. He needed to be corralled, as it were. He needed to be put in a position where he would be well-educated as to what the will of God is. Do you know that there are Christians that think that they're hurting God by not coming to church or by not receiving the word of God? You're hurting yourself. You're not hurting God. Although it would please God for you to be informed, it would please God for you to gather together and to be well instructed in the knowledge of God because there you can be a testimony and you can be a living witness to the goodness of God. However, there are those who don't understand how much they're suffering by being ignorant of the scriptures. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith is what pleases God. So you get blessed just because you purpose to involve yourself in the hearing of the word. This man was told by Jesus, that was the leper, that now is made heal. He says, you go into the synagogue, show yourself to the priest. They're going to give you a certificate of being cleansed so you can go about living a normal life and remember, they're going to give you that certificate or that clean bill of health on the basis of what Moses had already commanded to be done. That means the priests are not acting independently from what God said. They're acting in accordance with what God has said. 
When you choose to please God, when you choose to do those things that God desires, when you choose to give God what he wills, what he prefers, then you're going to say in action, I'm going to obey the word of God. There's no way you can please God going contrary to the word. And there's no way that you can please God being ignorant of the word because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, this man is just one example in this fifth chapter of how faith pleases God how that when he was informed, he then received his healing, and then he was told by Jesus, get to the synagogue so that you can know what Moses commanded or what is written so that this way the devil can't steal your healing from you and you'll be able to well testify of the goodness of God and how to help people to get healed themselves from the covenant of God. Let's keep reading here in Luke chapter 5 and see more examples of those that chose to submit to please God and those who chose not to please God. Remember, God is pleased by faith. Here in verse 14 of Luke chapter 5, And he charged him, Tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Notice this in Luke chapter 5, verse 15. But so much the more there went or went there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Infirmities means that they're infirmed or sick condition. I want you to circle or highlight, underline the words to hear, and I want you to underline or highlight the words to be healed. To hear and to be healed. To hear and to be healed. To hear and to be healed. Notice, not to be healed and then hear, but to hear first, which would culminate in them being healed. Remember that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The more you hear God's word, the more you know his will, the more you can align yourself with it and receive the results thereof. There are great multitudes that came to hear Jesus teach. Why? Because they knew if they heard, they could be healed of their infirmities. Verse 16 of Luke chapter 5 now. And he, Jesus, withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching. What was Jesus teaching? The word of God. So we could say it this way. As he was instructing on a line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept way, the will of God... As he was teaching, I love it. Jesus knew that there could not be any healing unless there was a hearing first. The hearing preceded the healing. The hearing has to precede the prosperity. The hearing has to precede the being born again. The hearing has to precede being the being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. The hearing has to take place first. And then after the hearing, there can be the manifestation of that which you've heard. We're looking at Luke chapter 5, verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So we knew there were great multitudes that came to hear and to be healed. But now the scriptures reveals unto us that there were those who of high stature came to hear Jesus or we could say it this way. They came to be present to observe Jesus 
And while they were there present at the hearing of the word, the power of the Lord was present on the scene to even heal them. Now, Pharisees, doctors of the law, dignitaries, religious leaders, they had issues going on with their bodies. And God's power was present to, to heal them of their condition. It's a blessing when the person who's teaching others lives out what he's teaching others. It's a blessing when a person says, I'm used of God to bring forth the word. And they first have encountered the reality of the word. So the power of the Lord was present to heal them. How did it get there? Because Jesus was teaching on the word. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now, it's interesting that the word here was present to heal. Doesn't say that they all got healed. It says that the power was present to heal them. You see, whatever is taught from the word, whatever is proclaimed from the word, whatever is preached on from the word, the power is in the word that is heard. And the person's willingness to act of, in accordance with that word. Verse 18, Luke chapter 5, verse 18. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way that they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he, that's Jesus, saw their faith. Now, what do you mean their faith? He saw the friends, and including the man that was on the stretcher, he had friends, that that man who was bound, that means laid out flat, could not move off of the stretcher, the man who couldn't walk for himself, when Jesus saw their faith, that means their actions in obedience to the word that was already proclaimed that they knew about. And what was that word? That if you hear his word, you can be healed of your infirmity. And great multitudes had come before and received their healing. And there was a man that was leprous. He came to Jesus, heard the will of God, and was healed. The doctors and the Pharisees and those that were leaders were present in the house, and they were filling up the empty spaces, which were now no longer empty because of their crowded in the house. The power of the Lord was present to heal them, but the Scriptures does not say that they were healed. It just says the power was present to heal them. But now, when this man who's lying on a stretcher, a gurney, when this man comes to the place where his friends, they want him in there so that he could hear and be healed, they could not get him in because the place was so crowded with the prestigious elite leaders. So the man went up on the housetop. And the way he got up on the housetop is that his friends, they took him up there and they couldn't get him in there with a normal roof. So they opened up the roof. They literally tore up whose house it was. They tore a hole in the roof big enough for this stretcher to get in the presence of Jesus. And they let down the man on the stretcher before Jesus. When Jesus observed what was going on, he identifies it here as from Scripture. He saw their faith. That means they were, their determination to be healed for their brother, for their friend to be healed. They had determination that this man had to hear in order to receive his healing. Or we could say it this way, for his life to be changed. They knew that if he can get before Jesus where the word was being taught, where the word was being proclaimed, where the word was being presented, that in the presentation of the word, the power 
was in the word that was being proclaimed. And they said, we're going to get our friend before the word. And sure enough, they opened up that roof. They let their friend down in the presence of Jesus. And Jesus says in verse 20, and when he saw their faith, circle or underline or highlight the word faith. You see, faith is what pleases God. Let's see if God is pleased with this man being let down before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto them, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Now, some people want to know, why would Jesus speak to the man? It is because words can be specifically directed toward people and things. Jesus wanted to be very, very clear. You that are on the stretcher, I'm talking directly to you by the Spirit of God. Man, your sins are forgiven. What a blessing. When God speaks directly to you, I advise you, receive his word. When God speaks directly to you, take him for what he says. Because the power to get the results is in the word that he spoke to you. Jesus said unto him, man, thy sins are forgiven you. Why would Jesus say to the man, your sins are forgiven you? Apparently, his, left, his uh, position of being paralyzed came as a result of sin. It is possible for people that engage in sin to be in a position where their body is suffering from the sin that they participated in. We do know this about sexually transmitted diseases, that sin can paralyze a person's body, open them up to more diseases, immune deficiencies, and their bodies can suffer. And Jesus said unto him, man, your sins are forgiven thee. Verse 21, and the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Isn't it interesting? The Holy Ghost reveals unto us what's going on in the hearts of them that had filled up the space in the room or the house. And the reason that the power of the Lord was present to heal them, but the Bible does not say them got healed. And we could kind of conclude from the scripture here that maybe they didn't get healed, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and those that were religious monkey monks, they didn't get any results with the word being preached. Why? Because they were second-guessing Jesus. They were trying to evaluate him on the basis of his clothes and his ped pedigree. Maybe they were looking at him wondering what color his skin was and the texture of his hair. Maybe they were looking at his clothing and seeing well, who his designer was. Maybe they were looking at him and saying he certainly is eloquent in his speech. Maybe what school he went to, they didn't teach him about another vocabulary. Maybe they were too busy being amazed at the boldness upon which he believed and preached the word of God. I'm saying unto you, the power of the Lord was present to heal them, but they didn't get healed, but this man, he was getting his healing. He received what Jesus said. Jesus said unto him, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And I'm saying unto you that are watching by television, by watching by computer all over the world, I'm saying this, Jesus Christ is declaring unto you, your sins are forgiven you. Rise up and receive and walk in the blessing of that word. This man was told, your sins are forgiven thee. There were those that were present where the man was who were questioning and calling Jesus a blasphemer. But don't you pay attention to the opinions of others. Don't you question God and others' inability to receive from God. Don't you get your eyes off of and your ears off of and your faith off of what God told you. For by the stripes that were laid upon Jesus, the Bible says... You were healed. Now take your healing. Thank God for it. And rise up in your healing in Jesus' name. 
The religious leader says, who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, what reason ye in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say rise up and walk. But that you may know that the son of man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereupon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Notice he glorified God. Why? Because God's will was manifested. God's pleasure was manifested. God's purpose was manifested. What is it the will of God? Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Psalms 35 lets us know that the Lord says, I want you to shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Why? Because let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. God's desire, God's will is for you to live a blessed life. God's desire is for you to know if a man's ways please the Lord, he'll cause even his enemies to be at peace with him. God wants you to live a wonderful, abundant life. For Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. Take the word. Receive that word. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Not your pedigree, not the color of your skin, not the texture of your hair, not the degrees on the wall or the lack thereof. You can do all things through Christ, O Christian, who strengtheneth you. Take God at his word and get busy doing the will of God. That man couldn't walk before, but after Jesus told him he was forgiven, he received that. After Jesus told him to get up and walk, he got up and walked. Why? Because he obeyed the will of God. And what I'm saying to you, you can please God. It pleases God for you to prosper. It pleases God for you to be healthy. It pleases God for you to live a holy life. It pleases God for you to be free from strife. I want to thank you for tuning in today's lesson. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then I'm going to lead you into a confession of faith. If you say these words after me, you can become a child of the living God. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let us pray these words now, believing these words in our heart and saying them with our mouth. Dear God, I believe in my heart you sent your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. He was crucified. His blood was shed to wash me clean. And dear God, you raised him from the dead. So I confess with my mouth now, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. You are alive. I believe this in my heart. And because I confess you as my Lord, I am now a child of the living God. Father, thank you for making me your very own. I will live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to thank you for your continual support of this broadcast of Spirit Food Christian Center. We're so grateful for your participation. I'd like to give you an opportunity to participate by our Push Pay app. Text my SFCC to the number 77977. You'll receive further instruction on how to give. We're so grateful and thankful for your continual support and love. Remember, you're helping to make it happen. 
In Jesus' name, you amen. Are the sun.